Welcome in. Great to have you here. I can't wait to share with you this Elephant Money News report. Starting with some announcements that Bank Teller made in his epic AMA video chat Sunday Funday. I'm going over an article by Cryptozoa and giving you some deep education that was planted on us by Elephant Money Herd and also Flying DeFi. And I'm going to finish it off with a story of a Herd community member. Let's get into it. Welcome in, welcome in. Yeah, we're about to begin. You may be asking now, Elephant Money, the future is now. Have it your way with Elephant Money King. It has always been in your hands, says Bank Teller. Bertha, the treasury, will be renounced by the holidays. If you're not sure what this means, definitely get on the main Elephant Money chat. Do some education. Uh, what I'm doing here is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Continue to do your own research. The great thing about Elephant Money, this is a wonderful place where you can do your learning and your research. Okay? He's working on wallet compatibility and new UI V3. We are in the place where folks of all sizes minnows up to the biggest of whales can swim together. So Bank Teller said, if the dumping continues, what happens? Bertha gets bigger. I'm going to touch on this later in this video, what that means and how that works. In this bear market, we are one of the best protocols out there by operating efficiently, lean, community driven. This next slide is a paraphrase of some of the real heart of the matter of what I really appreciate how Bank Teller cares so deeply about each of us, our backgrounds and what this means to us. It goes far beyond just getting money, but it's money is an amazing and important tool in all of our lives. And he gets it on the deepest level of how it can be a struggle for some of us. A lot of us haven't been raised learning about money. A lot of us haven't been raised with a lot of money. He wants to make it possible for so many of us. And I can tell from messages like this, there are real heroes in the world. All of you, you're a hero in someone's life, starting with your family. We can do great things. All we have to do is instill confidence in the rest of the world. The world could really use elephant money right now. I have faith. I'm a Christian. I believe in a higher power, and my background compels me to do good in the world. And I know many of you are the same. It doesn't matter what your religion. The point is, your faith compels you to do good in the world. We have to understand collectively that our job is to do good in the world. And now I want to touch on an article by Patrick Cryptozoa, Moving as one. Huge sales rocked the token price in early October. What should we think going forward? So what he said was 200 trillion tokens is a number that will allow Bertha to do more protection of the price. And so therefore, huge sales will not rock the price as much as they did in early October. He quote, that's the size I'm targeting for, for the start of a healthy size for Bertha. About 20 trillion more, and Bertha will nail the 200 trillion. Barring huge sales, we should hit that target sometime in December 2023. And even if there is a huge whale selling, Bertha will be better equipped to weather the increases of elephant in the LPs. Bailey from Elephant Money Herd came out with a video called Triumph right after there were some massive sells and the price took a hit. FUD videos came out of nowhere and we all know the FUD is what? This is all envy and nonsense. Yep. But in the meantime, let's go on the offensive. 
and put out some scenarios like what he did. I mean, it, I, I, I'm not taking credit for this. He came out with this idea. What if every human sold? What do we have? There's such deep liquidity and there's so many buybacks for Bertha. I'm just going to let him show you the math of how this works. All right, guys. So first, we're going to take a sneak peek into why uh, Elephant.Money is right the number one crypto. All right. And one of the uh, real big reasons behind that is it's only available on decentralized exchanges. OK, and specifically pancake swap. All right, so all of the prices and price action are governed by the mathematical formulas in those automated market makers, the liquidity pools, right? And that is the constant product formula, right? I'm going to show you guys how that works uh, today, all right? Is that Bertha, all right, in the graveyard protect that circulating supply and constantly raise the floor price of the token, all right? I'm going to show you guys uh, how that plays out, all right, with... Um, with a big stress test that we're going to do with um, the tokens, okay, and how the liquidity pools work. And it popped all that information into the spreadsheet here where we have all of our contracts. And if we add all of those up, um, so the protocol is holding about 79% of the circulating supply, 79% of the tokens, and that leaves 21% or about 210 trillion tokens out there in the wild in human hands, okay? Humans are emotional, right? So we never know what they're going to do. Crazy stuff. Okay, I'm going to pause right there because, wow, what a scenario, really? everyone sells their tokens so he's he's just going to do the ultimate stress test right with the amount of holders there are and so many of us are fully committed to this protocol because of what he's doing right here i have pushed my chips into the middle i have more than 200 billion tokens myself uh and I know that there are so many of uh, the community members who this is their number one project. So this is going to be fascinating to see what happens here as he goes through this scenario. So guys, every single person sells and Bertha is going to pick up 16.8 trillion uh, tokens. So that's 8%. So 8% of that supply is going to go into Bertha. It's not going to end up in the liquidity pools, right? So that is the value capture that over time has created these super deep uh, liquidity pools that Elephant Money has, okay? Some of the deepest on the Binance Smart Chain. All right. Um, so what will happen then, guys, is the remaining tokens are going to be sold into the liquidity pools. All right. And the BNB pool is going to get roughly 104 trillion tokens, boom, dumped into it. All right. On top of the 53 trillion that's already sitting there. And we're going to be dumping over 89 trillion tokens into the BUSD liquidity pool where we already have 45 and a half trillion tokens sitting in that one. OK, and what's going to happen, guys, is um, just everyone is going to take all the liquidity and it's going to dry up and it's going to go to zero. Are we FTT up in this place? No, 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 no. All right. So, guys, let's check it out. All right. So here's how this works. OK, so. We're going to take a look, guys, at how the constant product formula works. OK, and this is where I think um, people who, um, you know, are, are not fully understanding the system. This is where, you know, they haven't done the homework. Right. Because I've been making videos on this for about a year and a half. And uh, if you've known about elephant money, you got to do some of the research to really understand it's just absolutely amazing next level all right so constant product formula all right so we have a strict way that tokens are priced okay tokens are not priced on centralized exchanges using order books or anything like that it has to obey these mathematical rules um, for the pricing and quantities in the liquidity pools right that is key and that is how elephant money um, really creates 
this parabolic price appreciation that's going to be able to um, leverage the elephant token as the ultimate utility token in all of crypto. All right. Sorry. And that is the protection that the graveyard and Bertha provide. Okay. So people were a little like, oh, you know, Bertha's supposed to protect the price and, and pro Bertha protects all that liquidity in the liquidity pool all right and she ultimately just raises the floor price so every single person in the entire protocol all sold all at once and we still have six million dollars cold hard cash bnb all right uh sorry busd sitting in that liquidity pool and over seven million dollars of BUS, uh, sorry, BNB, sitting in that other liquidity pool with every single person in the entire protocol dumping on our heads like all at once. But it's unrealistic. No, no one's ever going to be selling like all of the elephant tokens all at once. Okay, but um, so I wanted to show you guys this because. Um, you know, it's it's very abstract, all right? It's it's difficult. Um, it's an engineering marvel. It's very complicated, and you have um, you know a lot of people out there that are just throwing out any sorts of things they think they know, um, but they don't really understand the system. All right, so anyone that's like kind of like ah, you know, I was scared of this price dump, guys. Look, I mean the price dump like it gets to the point where it's just like there's there's too much being there's too much elephant that has to be sold to really sting and hurt the price and to hurt the liquidity of the project all right this is a juggernaut guys this is going to be taking over DeFi. all right 2023 year of the elephant elephant money bertha liquidity kings okay guys um i'm super bullish uh and um you know, I, I hope uh, I hope you see this and it's like, yeah, man, like this, this is great. OK, so future. now flying DeFi has come out of the blocks with Chris Farrell doing videos coming out hot. Excellent videos. I'm going to play a few clips from their recent video they did right here. Let me also share with you another resource that I like to look at a lot, and it is this coin codex so coin codex here tells us more details more analytics more data more nuances of elephant money and i've chosen the seven day chart here as you can see just you know a nice graphical representation of the graph the growth over the over the last seven days here and if i scroll down a little bit further here in coin codex i want to share this with you here uh, th these are some great uh, highlights that Coin Codex shares gives us lots of great metrics. Uh, the price has increased by 279% in the last year. It's outperformed 96% of the top 100 crypto assets. I mean, that's just phenomenal, isn't it? Uh, we've had 23 green days in the last 30 days. We had a few red days last week. Normally, this is like 27, 28, 29 out of the 30. But this is what I want to share with you here. Look at this, the elephant money performance. And we've got the seven day time period. So elephant versus the US dollar, it's up 13% versus Bitcoin up 10% versus Ethereum up 14% versus USDT up 13%. Green against all other, if you like, competitors. So Coin Codex is a resource that you may like to familiar, familiarize yourself with if you particularly want to educate yourself even more in this exciting space. Um, let me also share with you, um, it's funny, the older I get, when I was at school, I couldn't stand things like graphs and spreadsheets, but the kind of the older I get, the more I'm getting into this, I'm loving all this. So with that in mind, there's something else that I want to share with you that you may not be aware of. You can see it, this little hamburger menu here. We get various options presented to us. And if we click on uh, dashboard, we get taken to the June dashboards. And uh, let me quickly share with you what we are presented with here. Now, governance essentially means the flow of money. When we hear that term, if you hear it re um, related to a bank, it means the flow of money in a bank. The ins and the outs, in other words. 
And really, these are the metrics that, that determine the, the health, if you like, of the protocol. And the dashboard that we're looking at right here, can you see this here? Uh, this is really like, if you like, the, the balance sheet. It's the transfers in and the transfers out. This is kind of what your, you know, your, your bank would have as their, their master balance sheet. Incidentally, try going to your bank and asking for this information. They'll just laugh you out of the room. They're not going to share with you things like this. This is one of the many reasons why decentralized finance is the future, because we can see everything. It's all on chain as it's known. It's transparent. You go to your Bank of America or your Chase or your HSBC or Santander and you ask to see this, they'll be like, no chance, pal, and they'll get security to show you the door. But here we can see it all, which is just wonderful. So what we're looking at here is the health of the treasury here, kind of the, the beating heart, if you like, of Elephant.Money. And in particular, I'm going to get a little bit nuanced here, but hopefully you'll find this interesting. I want to share with you the, um, the, the ins and the outs. So let's just get clear what we're looking at here. In this particular graph, we're looking at the daily ins and the daily outs of the treasury, the beating heart of Elephant Money. And the treasury is really the best barometer of the health of the ecosystem. So as you can see, there's a lot more going in than there is coming out. And this, by the way, includes the big sales that we've had over the last week. Look, it hasn't even dinged the Treasury. Despite the couple of days where we had really big sales, look at the trajectory going up and up and up. And that's because, whether you know it or not, everything at Elephant Money is engineered to generate buybacks of the Elephant token itself by the Treasury. And so as a result, over time, more and more of the liquidity, in other words, the Elephant token itself, is going to be protocol owned, which kind of takes away the emotion of us humans holding the Elephant token. The idea is over time that the Elephant treasury itself has as much as it possibly can. So there's going to be a small amount as possible for us humans. So emotions, the markets, you know, the treasury isn't going to be affected by that. I think at the moment, forgive me if I got this metric wrong, but I think at the moment over 67% of all elephant tokens is owned by the protocol. So it's absolutely incredible. And that's getting stronger and that's getting bigger over time. And this is another resource, another way that you can learn and deepen your understanding about the elephant treasury. That is the foundational thing we want to learn and understand. We've got these YouTube videos. We've got these, uh, the dashboard here. We've got articles, all kinds of research for us to strengthen our knowledge so that when some of the folks, like what Bailey said, people coming out talking about this protocol as if they know what they're talking about, they really, so many haven't really done this deeper level of research. If they had, they wouldn't be saying some of the things they are. So this is going on the offense. The more you understand, the more all of us understand, the more we each one teach one, the better, for sure. And now the story of a herd member. Brian, AKA Marta's Banker, is how he goes on Telegram. This is what Brian had to share with us. How did you find DeFi? I had always been aware of crypto, even held a little Bitcoin and Ethereum in a Robinhood account. Ha! I started exploring DeFi after reading about some of the interest staking accounts on BlockFi and Celsius. I moved most of my business profits there to gain that yield. This kept up until those platforms started lowering interest rates, which led me to start questioning those platforms. I was fortunate enough to move all of my funds before those platforms fell apart. My real intro into DeFi came from joining the ARK community in early 2022. It is a very helpful community in explaining setting up ledgers and MetaMask and moving funds through centralized exchanges to your wallets. See more below on ARK. Number two, why did you find DeFi to be compelling and something to keep doing even with the challenges therein? Uh, answer, I'm not new to finance. I started trading internet stocks in grad school in the late 90s and then made more shorting them all through way down. Then running my own RIA, managing money through 2011. Then it has been a mix of trading crude oil and bonds before starting my current business. I'm not a fan of TradFi 
and seeing how the blockchain is slowly flattening the world of finance, it is very compelling to me. The tools that are being developed to on and off ramp funds, pay bills directly and move funds instantly without the gatekeeping of TradFi and the ability to take part in a cooperative banking project, which distributes wealth to the cooperative participants, keeps me excited about DeFi. Question three, how did you find elephant money? Answer. My true adventures in DeFi started by joining the ARK Discord group. There were some initial AMAs in the group that presented Stampede for monthly cash flow, the typical how we generate 10k per month type of stuff. Around the same time I found SK and Slow's YouTube channels and started learning about the elephant token, not mentioned in ARK. I managed to pick up a few billion before the first parabolic rise. Question 4. How is elephant money different from the rest of DeFi for you? On the surface of DeFi, there is no comparison with other protocols and ROI dApps. I think there are some interesting and advanced strategies to extract yield, but given my time constraints, EM is the only place to be in DeFi. It has a store of value and cash flow mechanisms which are unique and stable. No, oh, that is an excellent story. I want to keep sharing these with you. Did you check out and notice his background, his understanding of finance and investing? Pretty deep. He's not the only one who is involved in elephant money who is looking at this as an excellent way for yield and community banking. That's something to take note of. I certainly have. So there you have it, folks, for this installment. It's been fun as always. It is a joy every single day to be a part of this community. I, again, I appreciate how Bank Teller really, really shares his background, his heart, what really matters to him. It has attracted some of the best people. This has been one of the most amazing experiences of my life, getting to know some of you. My family was hit with some very, very challenging news this week. And a few of you are my closest friends now. I reached out to you and you reached back to me. I thank you for that. That is what this community is about. People say a great community. It's not just a buzzword. This is uh, an amazing place to be. It was built with genius mathematics, a lot of experience behind it, and also by a man who really, really cares about people. And by being very transparent himself, I know that great people have been attracted to this community because it takes a lot of work. A lot of us are willing to work hard at this and we're willing to be proud to be in this circle and to do our part to help out. The herd is moving strong. We're rolling together. We are doing each one teach one and together we're all gonna make it. So I wish you the best. Go out there, plant seeds and do great things for other people. God bless you. Mm -hmm.